Will this winter bring intense cold and heavy snow to the United States, Canada and Northern Europe? It's a question millions ask every year. And the simple answer is yes, it will. But this winter, the weather can be more extreme than usual. Far above the Arctic Circle, a massive current of icy wind is shifting. Most people never see it, never hear it, and often never even know it exists. Yet, when this hidden force weakens, it can unleash the kind of winter that defines a generation. This high altitude engine has a name, the polar vortex. Now, subtle changes in the stratosphere suggest that the vortex may be entering a volatile phase. And with the growing prospects of a La Nina year, this winter could become one of the coldest in years. This is the story of the force shaping your winter, why it sometimes collapses, and what the latest signals reveal about the months ahead. So, what exactly is the polar vortex? Well, it isn't a storm, and it's not new. It's a giant ring of cold westerly winds high up in the stratosphere. That's the layer of the atmosphere about 10 to 50 kilometers above your head. These winds flow counterclockwise around the Arctic, forming a kind of containment field that keeps the brutally cold polar air locked in place. And during the winter, this vortex strengthens as the North Pole loses sunlight. The temperature contrast between the frozen Arctic and the milder latitudes to the south becomes more extreme, fueling a faster and tighter vortex. Think of it as a spinning barrier that traps freezing air over the polar region. But the vortex isn't always stable. Just like a spinning top can wobble and fall, the vortex can become lopsided, or even split. When that happens, chunks of polar air can escape and surge southward. These outbreaks are what lead to severe cold snaps in places far removed from the Arctic, like Texas or parts of southern Europe. One famous example is February 2021. A sudden weakening of the polar vortex led to a blast of Arctic air that plunged deep into the southern United States. Millions were left without power in Texas as pipes froze and heating systems failed. So what causes the vortex to destabilize? It starts from below, in the troposphere. That's the layer where our weather happens. Large-scale atmospheric waves, known as Rossby waves, can rise up and interact with the stratosphere. These waves are often generated by major mountain ranges like the Rockies or the Himalayas, and by contrasts between land and ocean. When these waves reach the stratosphere, they transfer momentum and energy, pushing against the vortex. If the push is strong enough, the vortex can weaken, shift, or even collapse entirely. This process is sometimes followed by a sudden stratospheric warming event. During an SSW, the polar stratosphere can warm by as much as 50 degrees Celsius in just a few days. This flips the wind patterns from westward to eastward and causes the vortex to break down. Once that happens, the cold air that was once bottled up spills out into the mid-latitudes. Not every SSW leads to extreme winter weather, and not every winter storm is caused by one, but there's a strong link. On average, when an SSW occurs, colder than normal temperatures tend to follow in parts of Europe, Asia and North America. While the vortex itself is a stratospheric phenomenon, it doesn't exist in isolation. 
Its behavior is influenced by broader climate patterns, including the quasi-biennial oscillation, or QBO, and the El Niño Southern Oscillation, which includes both El Niño and La Niña phases. Let's start with the QBO. High above the equator in the stratosphere, winds alternate direction approximately every 27 months. This flip-flop between westerly and easterly winds is known as the QBO. In an easterly QBO phase, like the one we're in now, the conditions are more favorable for a disrupted or weakened polar vortex. Why? Because the easterly winds in the QBO phase tend to amplify the upward propagation of Rossby waves into the stratosphere. More wave activity means more chances for the vortex to be disturbed. And then there's La Nina, a cooling of sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific Ocean. La Nina affects weather patterns globally, shifting storm tracks and changing jet stream behavior. In North America, La Nina winters often mean more precipitation in the Pacific Northwest, drier conditions in the southern US, and colder outbreaks in the central and eastern parts of the country. When both La Nina and an easterly QBO are present, as they are now, the stage is set for increased instability in the polar vortex. That means a greater risk of cold air outbreaks, disrupted jet streams and extreme winter weather. So the big question is, what can we expect this winter? Well, meteorologists are spotting some early warning signs. The early outlook for 2025 to 2026 suggests that the polar vortex might not hold as strong as usual. That means cold Arctic air could have a much easier time slipping south, reaching parts of North America and Europe that normally stay milder. If this happens, we could be looking at a winter with more snow, deeper freezes and possibly an early start to the cold season. Let's look first at North America. Meteorologists are now tracking signs of a possible early disruption in the polar vortex. Forecast models from NOAA and ECMWF show that a sudden stratospheric warming is already underway or just about to begin. This is extremely rare for this time of year, making it one of the earliest SSW events ever recorded. If this warming continues to develop, it could send Arctic air spilling south just in time for December. And we're already seeing the signs. By mid-November, snow has already made an appearance in cities like New York and Chicago, much earlier than usual. Temperatures have dipped sharply in parts of the Midwest and Northeast, matching the patterns we'd expect when cold air escapes the Arctic. With La Nina still in place, and the QBO now in an easterly phase, the ingredients are coming together for a colder than average December in many parts of the US. The Great Lakes, Midwest and Northeast are especially likely to see increased snow and colder conditions. In Europe, the picture is a bit more mixed, at least for now. Early season signals show that Western and Central Europe may actually start the winter on the milder side, thanks to a strong Atlantic jet stream. However, meteorologists are keeping an eye on potential high-pressure blocking patterns over Greenland or Scandinavia. If those develop in December or January, Arctic air could quickly surge southward into Europe. That means countries like the UK, Germany and Poland may still see cold snaps and snowfall later in the season, even if the first half of winter stays mild. As always, with the polar vortex, Timing is everything. The polar vortex is not a new phenomenon, but thanks to modern science, we understand it better than ever. And this winter, all signs point to a vortex that may not behave as it usually does. So, stay warm, stay informed, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into Earth's incredible climate systems, and I will see you in the next video.